Hey all, here are OS Reviews. In the past two years, one of the brands that I've honestly had the most fun with has been Geiger. They're a brand that has received investment from Xiaomi, and they specialize in game and puzzle products, including their smart Rubik's Cube, can teach you how to solve the cube, as well as play other animated games along with a companion app that knows exactly what the cube is like as you are rotating it, which is really neat. Along with last year, they pushed out the Smart 4 that was this three-dimensional Connect 4 game that is surprisingly challenging in terms of getting right. You can play against this AI board, and once again, it has a Bluetooth companion app that allows you to track your progress. So I'm really excited to take a look at one of their newest products this year, which is the Super slide. Now this is, as the name implies, kind of a slider or puzzle type of game where the objective is to move this red block all the way to the bottom there by rearranging the blocks that you have available. There's usually one or two gaps that you can use to then rotate everything and solve these puzzles. Now this particular product will sell for around 45 bucks on Amazon, so it's not too bad. It's going to be a little cheaper than the Connect 4, but also a little bit more than their Rubik's Cube. The design of this is definitely quite retro, especially with these colorful cubes. It should be fun for kids and adults alike. And this is obviously going to be very interactive compared to playing a similar game on the phone or tablet. What's also a little bit different about this model compared to their Rubik's Cube and the Smart 4 though, is it doesn't really have a Bluetooth component that can interact with the app, but there is still an app that you can use if you're stuck and you enter the current state of the board, it can tell you an optimal solution. Now this one does take two AA batteries as opposed to being rechargeable, which is also maybe one of the only cons I would say. I do wish it would be a rechargeable unit, but it is what it is. Now again, there is still an LED screen here that can show you uh, what type of board or game you're currently on, and you're able to access all the dedicated games directly on it. Got just a protective wrap there, also on the small LED display which shows off the colors. Just got a quick user guide along with some few additional pieces that you can use to swap out as the games progressively get more difficult. So for instance, in the first level that you're playing, you will have just one blue block to start off with and you have all of the remaining pieces being the red, uh, the master block that you have to try and get into this home piece over here as your objective, and then the yellow blocks that you can switch freely up, down, left, and right. So they're very flexible in terms of these single pieces, hence the difficulty level will be quite low. But as you get harder and harder, further levels will then tell you to replace these blocks with one of these blue blocks. And because their movement is much more limited, they take up a bigger space, you do have to use a bit more problem solving skills to try and achieve and unlock the same game. Now the DNA behind this particular product I will say is definitely similar to their aforementioned Super 4 in the sense that it still is using these magnetic plates for attaching everything onto the board, which means that even if you are shaking the board or holding it upside down, it's not going to fall out. So if you're in a car or on a subway, you can still play it freely and the pieces will not accidentally really move by themselves. Uh, the magnet is quite tight and has a very satisfying motion whenever you're actually moving them aside. They make this clacking noise, almost like a mechanical keyboard, and it just makes the entire process a lot more, I have to say, addicting. Construction quality of all the pieces, the plastic they're using, and magnets are all top-notch, and again, very reminiscent of the blocks that they had from the Connect 4, but just on a smaller scale. Alright, so let's take a closer look at what we are looking at here. So basically what we can do with the left and right keys is to go between the different levels that you're able to switch. So we were already at level kind of uh, 28 or 30 over there in our demo, but if I want to cycle all the way back to the beginning, you'll see that one being displayed, and then it will show you a sequence of how you want to set up the board at the beginning state of the game. So you have to do this part yourself manually. Maybe that's the only part which I think it maybe can be improved upon, but it would be tough. Uh, after all, the pieces can't really move by themselves. That would really add substantially to the cost of the unit, but you have to kind of reset the board uh, and get it to the state where it looks like in the pictures every single time. That can take a minute or two. Sometimes the games themselves, uh, depending on the level, can be really fast to solve, so that might even be faster than actually rearranging the board, but still it is a relatively simple process. Now that we have it looking like the image here, we can tap on start. There are some sound effects by the way, uh, so now we want to again move the board so that the red piece will go into this bottom portion. Since this is level one, it's really meant as a tutorial or demo, which is why it's going to be quite simple here in terms of the solving process, and over that you can see how that first level is going to be quite fast, really just a tutorial level. Whenever that red block again hits that middle position, it will recognize that the 
problem or the game has been solved. A couple of notes, if you are using any other piece, even two of them which are stacked, it's not going to really mistake that as solving the game. You have to really use this red piece, but it also means whenever you have the red piece on the section, it will think that you have solved the game. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're arranging your board to not put that here. Otherwise the game will kind of end and it will go over to the next level there automatically. And in terms of the difficulty levels, they do get substantially harder again the further up you go with more and more of these blue blocks that get introduced as your goal is further and further away from the bottom portion. But again, you can still solve it with a little bit of practice and patience. And it can be just a really fun process, I have to admit. There are some other um, modes that you can try out here as well. So for instance, if you do uh, want to challenge yourself, you can create timed runs. You will be forced to solve the game within X minutes, otherwise you will basically time out. So all of that can progressively make the games more challenging. Of course, as you start playing more and more, you get the rhythm of it and you start to notice maybe what are shortcuts that can get you faster and better at playing the game. That's the whole point. And some levels will be just really fast, just a few seconds to solve. Other ones, you may get into a stuck state and require more time and thinking to get you out of it. Quick look at the companion app, as aforementioned, it's basically a digital copy of the same product that we have in front of us, including accessing all the game states, over 500 levels to pick from, and they correspond to the exact same levels and games that you have stored on the board itself. So for instance, here is that level one. If we tap on the same one here, you can see that the exact same state will be triggered. So if we want to, uh, let's say, move this block, you can then access that same state that you would do uh, if playing on the actual board. So you can play some games when on the road, for instance, and when you get back home, you can continue off on the next level just by sliding left and right. But of course, using the phone app, it's not quite as fun as the board because you don't really get that tactility of the moving pieces. You have to move everything one at a time versus on the physical board, you can actually push multiple pieces together. However, the best feature of the app would definitely be the solver, which again, if you're stuck, you're able to select the same pieces onto the board and it will give you an optimal solution. So let's try something pretty challenging like this stage where we have three of these blue blocks and let's try to search and see if this is going to be solvable. It will now try and give us a solution step by step. So it says that this will take around 50 steps, as you can see there, to completely solve, uh, but it, it will be feasible. And then it will play these back one at a time. You can pause it, go forwards, and it can be pretty helpful as hints if you are truly stuck. And you can even say pause it and only look at one or two steps. Maybe then you'll get the idea and be able to solve the rest of the board. But if not, it will take you the entire solution step by step using the kind of calculations from the app, which is again, pretty neat. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Geiger Super Slide. I have to say this thing is surprisingly fun, satisfying, and almost addictive as you start playing it. It really just makes the entire thing so much more immersive. The magnetic pieces, which allows you to play even if walking around, uh, is well integrated. The entire design feels pretty smart, a lot of thoughtful additions to it, and again, a great addition to their ecosystem and fun brain-teasing games, just made in a slightly more smart and digitized form. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Incredibly fun, this has been the Geiger Super Slide.